Hey everybody, welcome to my lesson on SVG filters, animated warp. Today I'm going to show you how to take a warp filter and animate it to get this waving flag effect. Now the first thing you need to learn about SVG warp filters is that there is no such thing as an official SVG warp filter. Meaning you'll never see an SVG warp filter in the MDN docs or in the SVG spec. However, we can combine SVG filter primitives to create our own custom warp filter. This here is the actual code of the warp filter we'll be using today that's generated from Boxy SVG. You'll notice here that we have an outer filter element and inside of there, there are these sub nodes which are referred to as filter primitives. And let me tell you that understanding and working with filter primitives is a whole science unto itself. However, what we're going to do today is explore code like this and figure out what attributes we need to target and animate to get the effect that we want. And of course, if you want a more technical take, head on over to MDN and you'll see here that the filter definition says that the filter SVG element defines a custom filter by grouping atomic filter primitives. It is never rendered itself, but must be used by the filter attribute on SVG elements or the filter CSS property for SVG slash HTML elements. This last part here is pretty interesting because I'm going to show you later that the filters we use in SVG can be applied to HTML elements. Now, if you're like me, terms like atomic filter primitives don't make much sense. So we'd want to click on filter primitive elements and you're gonna get this whole list of what those actually are. And in your free time, I'd invite you to click on things like FE component transfer, and then you will get long articles like this that explain all the different things used inside of that primitive. And I'll also give you a few articles so that you can dive deeper into the technical aspects. But for now, let's start exploring SVG filters in Boxy SVG. But before we do that, please just take a quick moment to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And if you want to learn more from me, check out creativecodingclub.com and unlock over 200 green sock lessons. Let's get going. So here I am in Boxy SVG. You'll see here I have a bitmap image inside my SVG. It's very vibrant and colorful. What I'm going to do is go over to the compositing panel and you'll see here that we have a filters menu and I'm just going to click on add filter and you're going to see a whole number of filters that are drastically going to change the appearance of that image. At the bottom of this list here we have a lot of filters that just sort of mess with the colors. So I can click on sepia and now you'll see we get this sepia toned effect. I can change the amount of it using this slider. I can remove a filter by right clicking and deleting it. I'm going to go ahead and add another filter down here for hue rotate. And now again, I have this angle that I can change and I can basically adjust the hue of that image and make it bluish green instead of its natural orangey yellow. I can do some further weirder things by using add filter and going down to the bottom and selecting invert. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Now, whenever I'm adding these filters, what's happening is in the defs tag here, Boxy SVG is going to create filter elements. And you'll see that this filter here has an ID of hue rotate. And if I open up that filter tag, inside is an FE color matrix filter primitive. And you'll see that the hue rotate value is set to 148, which is basically the angle of rotation. If I go into the invert filter and pop that open, you'll see there is an FE component transfer filter primitive. And when I crack that open, you'll see there are all these other FE funk tags inside of there, which are also filter primitives. Now this whole filter primitive stuff is a bit technical, but I just want you to have a little bit of a cursory glance at the basic structure of these filters. And I wanna point out that for these filters that basically change colors in the same way that CSS filters would, I probably wouldn't go through the hassle of creating these SVG filters. I would probably suggest just using CSS filters. 
This gallery here by Stacy gives you an overview of the common CSS filters and what they look like. And I want to show you that these same CSS filters can be used with SVG. So in this SVG here of the penguin, everything is wrapped inside of this group here. And you'll see I have standard CSS filters down here in these different classes. So for this group, I can just apply a class of sepia and we'll get the same sepia effect. We can even change the amount by changing this down to like a 50%. Very nice. If I want to invert the image, well, I can just apply the invert class that uses the invert filter. Ooh, cool. And to change the hue, yup, I can change the hue too. However, there are lots of things SVG filters can do that CSS filters can't. Let's take a look. So back here in Boxy, I've removed all the filters, and now I want to focus on the filters at the top of the list here. Something like this point light effect is really neat, but I want to show you that in the defs, we're going to have the filter object with the ID of point light filter zero, and inside of there, we have all of these filter primitives like FE specular lighting, FE diffuse lighting, FE merge, and each one of these you can sort of crack open and see that there are more nested primitives inside of them. So for an effect like this, yeah, it looks cool. And if I actually select that filter, you'll see there's a whole lot of different settings that I can change. Let's bring that diffuse light up a bit. We can bring the ambient light up. You know, there's so much to change here, but you'd really have to hunt down how all of these sliders affect all the different settings in here. And that might be a little bit complicated to start out. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. I definitely wanted you to see though how it was made. And I'm gonna go ahead and let's add something like, I don't know, let's go to Pixelate. This one's pretty cool. You'll see here we have a pixel size slider. Right now it's set to 10. And if I bring that down to one, you'll see the pixels get smaller and go to actual size. I can bring that number up and we can get sort of an animation of the pixel size changing, which is pretty cool. However, I wanna point out that right now the pixel size is 10 here. I'm gonna to go to the pixelate filter and I'm gonna crack it open and you'll see we have like FE flood primitive, FE composite, FE tile, all of this stuff, all right? And with that filter selected, just keep an eye down here. And as I change the pixel size slider, you'll see a few things update, okay? As I'm changing the pixel size, you'll see that the width and height change, and so does this radius, all right? And what I noticed was that the radius is half of the width and height. So one more time, if I make this value up here one, we'll have width one, height one, radius 0 0.5. So we could animate those values, but I think it would be a little bit tricky animating three values in our first exercise. So let's go ahead and animate a warp filter. All right, so to illustrate the warp, I'm gonna start off with this group here of the good old American flag, and I'm gonna go over to my compositing panel, and for add filter, I'm gonna select warp. Ah, that's pretty neat. Now for warp, there's two parameters that we have. We have the amount that it's warped. You'll see how extreme that is. And then we also have a frequency, okay? So when we're doing a flag animation, we probably wanna just be a little bit subtle here. Maybe just do a low amount and then just animate the frequency a little bit, all right? So it's just like, flapping in the breeze nicely. However, we can crank both of these values and get some very strange effects, all right? And you'll see some animations that do things like that, and you'll be free to experiment as well. But for today, we're just gonna bring things down just a little bit, keep that frequency somewhere around here, and maybe just do a very subtle flag wave without a whole lot of distortion. Again, animations are all about playing with the numbers, okay? So the tricky part though, is that in order to animate these numbers, whoa, we need to know where they are. So I'm gonna head on over to the defs here, and this is the radial gradient for that rectangle in the background. I wanna look at the warp filter filter, 
and I'm going to crack that open and you'll see we have this FE component transfer primitive in there we have these table values we have this FE merge but what we want to pay attention to is this FE turbulence where we have a base frequency and we also have an FE displacement map that has a scale value. So keep an eye on scale and base frequency as I select the image, go back to the filter, and when I change the amount, you will see that it's actually the scale that is changing, okay? So if I set a scale of 65 up here, you'll see a scale of 65 down there. Selecting the image again and the filter, if I change the frequency, you will see that the base frequency is changing right here. We have 0 0.022. Whoa, that's crazy. And if we go back to the filter, we have 0 0.22. So what I want to do with my GSAP code is I'm going to select the FE turbulence tag and change its base frequency attribute. And we'll also mess with the FE displacement map and change its scale value. So let's head on over to CodePen and see how that would look. So here we have my map in CodePen with a nice heading one added to the page. And if I scroll down, you'll see that my filter has this ID of warp-filter-0. And it's important to note that as I get down to where my group is, that it has an inline style of filter with the URL of warp filter zero, and I also have an ID of flag on there. Now, as I said previously, what I want to do is find the FE turbulence node and animate its base frequency attribute. So guess what? In the JavaScript, I already have a timeline set up. We're gonna find the FE turbulence node and animate the base frequency attribute. There's no need for you to watch me type all that. So let's give it a little bit of a whirl. And there we go. We have a very nice gentle flag waving. If I were to change this base frequency number to something like 0.8, we'd get some wildly different effects here, all right? That might be a little bit too squiggly. Um, so what I would probably do is go back to a 0.3. And as I mentioned before, we also have that scale attribute that we can animate, okay? And I'm just gonna paste it in. The FE displacement map has a scale, and now you can see that things get a little bit wobblier in a different way, okay? So I urge you to experiment with both those values. But what I think is very cool and something that you absolutely need to understand is that just like in the HTML, you will find that our group has an inline style that applies that filter, I can go into my CSS and for my heading one, I can also apply that same filter using that same ID. Now the next time this loads, watch what happens the text up here actually gets warped. Let's play it one more time. And now you'll see the letters up there are moving around, okay? So we can apply these SVG filters to HTML elements and animate them in the same way. So I hope you understand that this opens up a whole new world of animation effects that you can apply to SVGs and DOM elements alike. And one more thing to point out here though and make totally clear is that in my JavaScript, this animation code here is impacting the filter that's applied to both elements, all right? So if I wanted to only animate the filter on the map and then later animate the filter just on the text, I would have to have two separate instances of that filter in my SVG, all right? So I'll probably go into more detail on how to do that in the future, but if I didn't want the text to warp as the flag was warping, I would have to go into the HTML, copy out the entire filter here, make a duplicate, give it a new name, and apply it separately to the heading one. So just keep that in mind. So for your homework, crack open Boxy SVG, apply some filters to some artwork, and experiment with the different values. 
and I hope you end up using this warp effect in something cool and send it my way. See you in the next lesson. If you want to master green sock animation, visit creativecodingclub.com. Access over 200 lessons with 40 hours of HT video, tons of demos, and get new lessons weekly for only $2.95 a month. Visit creativecodingclub.com for more.